One image I don't hear very often in contemporary Christian circles is that of God as spouse, although that analogy is very ancient. In fact, marriage between God and God's people is one of the dominant metaphors in the Hebrew Scriptures, what we call the Old Testament. It was this understanding that led St. Clair, who we celebrate today along with St. Francis, to give up everything to follow Jesus. The story goes that Francis, who had already renounced his wealth and his social standing to become a poor, humble servant of God, preached so powerfully of God's love that Claire yearned to know this love for herself. Deep in her soul, she felt Christ calling her to himself. Arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. This was, though, the early 13th century, and her family wanted Claire to get married, like any respected young noblewoman would be expected to do. Instead, she went to the altar and laid upon it her jewelry and all her rich robes and finery and insisted that she would be married to Christ alone. Claire entered into covenant with God and gave herself entirely to this union. Her writings convey a shocking intimacy with her heavenly spouse of the deep sighs of her desire for him and the passionate embrace of Christ's love for her. Now, I recognize that spousal imagery can get uncomfortable for some folks, depending on your image of God. This is one of the many reasons that using primarily masculine pronouns and metaphors for God to the exclusion of feminine or non-binary images is so deeply problematic. We miss out on ways of knowing the covenanted love of God more fully. What might intimacy with God look like for you? I recognize, too, that a marital metaphor can be confusing or complicated, depending on whether you are married or are not married, or maybe marriage is a place of pain and brokenness in your life. But I submit that this this is much deeper than our imperfect institution of marriage. This is about a God who pursues you and loves you with a fierce, abiding, all-encompassing love. If we look through this lens at our sacred stories, we find A God who has always called God's people to come closer. Who pursues running after us when we turn away. Who longs for intimate relationship with us. We can see in the story of Christ, the story of a God who will go to any length to draw us into this everlasting love. In the great canonic hymn we heard last Sunday, we hear how Christ emptied himself, gave up everything to take on human form and come among us. Sometimes I think that when we hear about these saints who gave up all their worldly possessions, who take vows of poverty and live on almost nothing, we picture them as strict rule followers. We imagine that they heard, sell your possessions and give alms, maybe a bit too literally 
that they had a particularly narrow view of what it takes to follow Jesus. But their writings are not about fulfilling some requirement or earning their way to heaven. They talk of great joy, of the life-giving love they experienced once they shed all that stuff that threatened to fill the space between their heart and God's. Claire, in fact, writes of the incredible happiness of clinging to Christ with all her being. Claire and Francis, among many other saints, truly made for themselves purses that do not wear out. Made not out of fear, not out of duty, but in wholehearted response to the God who pursues in relentless love. Hear these words spoken to you. Arise, my love, my cherished one, and come away. In some ways, they feel like a lovely dream for someone else in some other time where they could just remove themselves from the real world. But I suggest that it may be exactly what we need to do. It may be just what God is calling us to. It is so easy to get caught in the endlessly horrifying news cycle, to be stuck in the fear of what the next several months might bring to this country. We can't help but be exhausted, listless, angry. I am not in any way suggesting that we ignore the work that does need to be done. But we must recognize when our own hearts are breaking, when we cannot hold ourselves together any longer, that Christ is calling, give your heart to me. What might God be calling us to come away from in order that we might perceive and even reciprocate God's desire for us? To come away from doom scrolling or media generally. To come away from endless speculation and fear to come away from pouring our energy into things we cannot change. Maybe God is calling us to come away from noise and busyness to spend five minutes in silence, to curl up and weep in God's warm embrace, or to laugh and find joy in one of life's tiny moments. We are recognizing now in ways that perhaps hadn't come quite so close before that our treasures on earth are subject not only to thieves and moths but viruses and fires. Maybe the purses we had made for ourselves our safety nets are wearing out. Our hope cannot rest in any political figure, in any movement or institution. Our hearts can be at rest only in God alone. In the midst of the turmoil that surrounds us, and the unease that could easily overwhelm our hearts and minds, God continually 
pursues us, loves us beyond measure, invites us to intimate union. What, what might it like, be like to respond, not, not to fit prayer like one more obligation into our day, but simply to allow God's passionate love to sustain us, to fill us, to overflowing. Arise, my love, my beloved, and come away. <laughs>